Hi, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to this month's freshly baked art legality. I'm Shubhesh Kanuri, product marketer at Legality, and joining me today are Anshul and Rithik from the product team. And for the ones who are joining us for the first time, I quickly wanted to uh, touch upon what we expect from freshly baked art legality. Here, you will be the first ones to witness our new features in action, and not just new. Sometimes we even show old features if we think they are relevant to our clients and people who use legality. And honestly, I think it's like having a front row seat to the future of digital documentation. And we're not just going to showcase these features. We're going to delve deeper into how they can help you unlock greater efficiencies and ROI for your unique use cases. And not just that, this is a golden opportunity to directly speak with with our product team. Like you can ask any questions you have from Rithik or Anshul about the features that we're going to showcase to you today. So moving on and just seeing what the agenda is for today, we'll be showing you three new features. First is India's only digital revenue stamping system. Second is custom branding for Aadhaar Resign screen. And last is a way to dynamically route signers to a specific web page after they're done signing document. This is going to be useful for lenders on this call. And we'll show you how to use this feature to execute KFS as per the latest RPA guidelines. So just wait till the end for that feature and we'll show you. So uh, starting with the first feature, which is digital revenue stamping and revenue stamps traditionally they're used for digital demand promissory notes or as commonly they're called DPNs. So far DPNs till like 2015, they were in the schedule one of IT act, which means you could not execute them digitally. What I mean is anything under schedule one of the IT act of India, you could not execute them digitally or take electronic signatures on them. But when in 2015, these were amended and Aadhaar resign was introduced, even then DPN was still left a part of schedule one, but that was still like 2022, which was a little less than two years ago now. And that is when government made some amendments to the IT act and removed DPN from schedule one of the IT act. But even after the IT act allowed digital execution of DPNs, uh, after it was removed, uh, from schedule one, there was one very big problem. There was no digital revenue stamping service available in India which meant even if the uh, law allowed you to execute DPNs digitally, you could not do it. There was always some portion of execution which remained physical, even if the law allowed you to execute DPNs digitally. And this was not ideal. Uh, companies, they had to spend extra man hours and costs managing this physical leg of DPN execution to fix the revenue stamp on DPNs. And that's why we've launched revenue stamping services by legality. Under this legality procures, digitizes and uploads revenue stamps to your legality account on your behalf. So your digital DPN flows are hundred percent digital. They're not like some part of it is digital and some of it stays physical. And as, as of last month, June, 2024, we have successfully digitized close to a nine lakh digital revenue stamps. And yeah, just in the last two, three weeks, in fact, they've digitized over three lakhs revenue stamps for our clients. Without further ado, I would now like to invite Rathik and see how it works. Over to you, Rathik. Thanks a lot, Shubesh. Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for taking out the time to attend Legality's freshly baked demo. And I am also personally very excited to demonstrate Legality's latest edition into our Harad stamp stack, which is digital revenue stamping. Shubhesh, could you just confirm if my screen is visible? Yes, it is. Okay. So like Shubhesh mentioned for revenue stamps, demand promissory note is the primary use case that we have encountered so far. And we also realized that in order to make revenue stamping compatible with the general legalities, Bharat stamp stack, you need to be able to use it along with other kinds of stamp papers that you procure via legality. So I will just give you a brief demo on how you can incorporate digital revenue stamp into your current workflow and also how the legality dashboard can be used to procure revenue stamps via legality. So just as an example, I'll create a new document. I'll upload my agreement and then you just toggle on the use stamp toggle. Let's say I want to attach a stamp paper of Haryana and along with this, I also want to use a revenue stamp for this document. So I'll toggle this on 
I'll select it says INR1 stamp of revenue stamp and I need to enter how many revenue stamps am I attaching to the above document. Usually in most cases it would be one but if your use case warrants you can also add any number here you can add two three four whatever number you want for this uh, demo I'll just uh, take one revenue stamp I'll click on next. You configure who is to sign this document for again, for the purpose of this demo, I will be signing the document via legality virtual sign. Click on next. And the finalized page shows you a preview of the final document that the signer will sign. So you can see I attached a, a stamp paper of Haryana. This is a grass procured stamp paper of Haryana with a legend printed on it. And then if I load more papers, you can also see there is a revenue stamp attached to it. I'll just zoom in for better visibility. You can also see that a text has been printed on top of the revenue stamp, which ensures that the revenue stamp cannot be reused for a document and that the revenue stamp as per the stamp act is also defaced, right? So no one can just take out the revenue stamp from the paper and stick it somewhere else. Legality ensures that the stamp paper is not reused. And you can see the ID printed here is also printed on every page of the document and the revenue stamp is also assigned a unique revenue stamp ID by legality just to ensure that the process is robust and there is no duplication happening for any revenue stamp that is used. So I'll just send this document. I'll quickly cover the signing journey just to give you a taste of how the signer will experience this journey. So the signer will see the Haryana stamp paper. Then they will see the revenue stamp attached and followed by the document. So I'll quickly cycle through the signing process. Now that I've signed the document, I'll go back to my dashboard and just give you a quick preview of the audit trail. So you can see here, the audit trail contains the document IDs, which were printed on the stamp papers, thus establishing a relationship between the documents document that you have signed and the stamp papers attached to it. Along with the stamp details, it says I had attached a stamp of Haryana and a revenue stamp along with what is the total amount of duty that you have paid 101 for Haryana and one rupee for a revenue stamp and the serial numbers which were which legality has assigned in case of a revenue stamp and in case of the Haryana stamp this is given by the issuing authority so this is the update with respect to audit trail for digital revenue stamping now I will just briefly cover how you can place an order for a revenue stamp so once you log into the new legality dashboard, you simply have to click on the create button here, click on stamp series, and this form will open up in front of you. You can, let's say for reference, I give this a name. I'll select the state here, which is revenue stamp. There is only one denomination available for revenue stamp, which is rupee one. And also to note revenue stamps are state agnostic. So a revenue stamp can be used in any state. I'll enter the first party name, which will be used to form the content that is printed on top of the stamp paper. I'll just write this is an optional. This is the text that will be printed on top of the revenue stamp. I'll just enter some details here. And you just create your series. So if I search the list here, you can see a revenue stamp series has been added here with denomination one. And now if you want to purchase revenue stamp papers, you can either bulk select it along with other series that you want to purchase, or you can just simply click the purchase button here, enter the quantity. Let's say I want to purchase 100 stamps purchase, and then you will be led to the purchase flow. You can proceed, confirm, 
and then just make the payment here and legality will upload the stamp revenue stamps in your inventory within four to five working days. In addition to this, I would just like to plug in a few quality of life features that we have introduced in the stamps module for you to manage your stamp inventory better. As you can see, there are a few indications here, which have been uh, put against a series. So you, as you can see here that this says procurement details, which means that there is an active order for series zero one of Punjab, which is being procured by legality. And once I click on it, it will give you some basic information when the order was placed, what is the order quantity? What is the estimated due date that the team gave for procurement? But since stamp procurement can depend on a lot of factors, external factors that are outside uh, legalities control. For example, there is renewals of stamp vendor licenses going on. There are public holidays or there is stationary shortage at the treasury. There can be delays in procurement where the updated due date will be provided to you by our team along with a reason for delay. Here it is because this is for demo purposes. The reason is a sample reason. But once it, when it is a real procurement, the team will provide you with a legitimate reason as to why a delay has happened. In addition to this, the system also now prompts you by telling you that you, if you have consumed a certain threshold of your stamp series, it will tell you that your series is running low on balance. Like it says 98% of your last purchase quantity and prompts you to make the purchase here. And also it tells you when stamp papers are expiring for that series. So it tells me that three papers in this series are expiring in the next 30 days. So it gives you a lot of leeway as to, and enables you to take a decision as to, do you want to purchase more stamp papers or do you want to extend the expiry of the stamp papers within time rather than you finding out on the last day that I need to purchase stamp papers or your stamps have expired and you don't know that they have expired. But this is the procurement details is one of my personal favorite features because currently there is a lot of ambiguity as to when an order will be procured. If it is delayed, there is a lot of communication gap between the vendor legality and the customer. So this is a very small starting point for legality to give you more information regarding your order so that you can plan better and also give you time in case you want to plan for contingencies. That's it, Shubhesh. I think I've covered everything. Great. Thanks a lot for that. But before we move ahead, quickly wanted to check, does anyone has any questions about digital revenue stamping? You can either raise your hand or send us your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, we have a questions. Uh, Vasandra, I've given you access to speak. You can ask a question by unmuting yourself. Okay. Hi, a good presentation. First of all, thank you for informing us about it and uh, bringing this into notice. I wanted to know after buying the stamps, can we make changes in the document? When, uh, could you repeat your question? Like you showed a screen where, wherein we can preview the stamp paper, the revenue paper, and a document is attached below the revenue stamp paper. That's and are like, can we make changes on that document? You can make changes to the document in two ways. One is if you're using legality template, then you can go to the template uh, and edit whatever you want in the template engine itself. If let's say what is filled in the template, you want to change that, you will get an option uh, right after the screen uh, wherein first they affix the stamp papers. The next very screen is wherein you can fill details in the template. So wherein you can fill whatever detail you need to fill in the template. Let's say you want to enter the borrower's name. You can enter the borrower's name there. But let's say you're passing a PDF to legality from your LOS or LMS systems. Then in that case, you will have to edit the document within your LOS, LMS, however they allow you to do it. Because once you've passed a, a base 64 PDF to legality, then you would not be able to edit that. Okay. Because that's uh, how PDF works. Uh, if you uh, do try to edit it after you've affixed stamp papers and get in, gotten signatures from even a single person, the signature firstly will break and it will make the agreement non-enforceable. Okay, I get it. And I have one more question. Are these stamp papers, you have service for all the states in India, all over India? Yes. And do you get like the physical document and then digitize it? 
we do stamping two ways. One is inventory led model. One is inventory less model. Inventory less model is NESL, wherein uh, you can generate stamp papers in real time. The inventory led model is wherein we we procure stamps on your behalf. We digitize them, and then you can find them on your uh, legality dashboard to use. The procured physical copies of the stamp paper with the document it is affixed to, we send that to you physically for storage purposes because you might need to uh, present it in case you need to enforce the document. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, does anyone, we do have a question. So along with this, do you have Maharashtra ESBTR? Do you want to answer that? Sure. So currently legality does not serve Maharashtra ESBTR as it is a the process requires multiple steps to execute. First, you have to generate a chalan and then collect the ESBTR from the bank. In case use cases like this uh, are there, we would uh, recommend exploring legality's inventory less model, which is via NESL, where you can pay stamp duty in real time and generate the stamp paper digitally. But to answer this question, legality does not service ESBTR as of right now. So thanks a lot again, Pratik, for the uh, great demo. And quickly, I wanted to summarize the benefits of digital revenue stamping before we move to it. First benefit is, and this is also a question we get asked often when we are showcasing it to our clients in demos. So is this compliant with digital uh, sort of stamping laws of India? And the answer is yes. This is 100% uh, compliant of all the stamping laws in India. And apart from uh, what you saw during the demo, you can actually, you did see it in the demo, the all the quality of life features that Rithik showed us, which reduce manual efforts on your part. And of course, final benefit is it makes your DPN flows sort of 100% digital and instead of it being half digital and half physical as it used to be prior to digital revenue stamping. So moving on to the next feature, which is custom branding for Aadhaar Resign screen. And for this, imagine your uh, signers, when they start the signing journey, they're in a branded flow wherein they can see your color and your logos. If you see on the left side of the screen, that's the legality signing interface. And you'll see like on the top, while it's very small because it's a screenshot on a slide, but you'll see there's a logo visible there, which is a not legality logo. And basically you can just put your logo there. You can change the colors of this interface to match your color preferences. But as soon as they are on the last screen of legality, and as soon as they are redirected to the ESP portal, they're on a screen, which neither has your logo nor your colors for them to see. If you'll see on the right side of the screen, there's, there's a screenshot of the ESP portal and it is just blue in color with their own logo. And this sort of, it causes confusion and this can often lead to fear of fraud because think of it from a signer's point of view, they're in your branded journey, they're seeing your logo. They know that they're doing business with this particular company. They're let's say for example taking a loan from this particular company and then they get redirected to the esp portal nsdl cdsl whatever whichever portal they get redirected to and there they don't see your logo or your color they see a new logo new colors from a company they might not know because unless you are in this industry you don't know nsdl or cdsl from an average indian consumer point of view and that can cause customer drop-offs and that is where custom branding for Aadhaar Resign screen comes in. It allows you to show your brand logo and or colors on the ESP page. And as of now, we have two ESPs where you can get custom branding. First being a Protein or an SDL previously. Here you can change the web, web page background color, the way the button looks, format the way text is, and even add your logo. While CDSL currently only allows a logo to be changed, like you can add your logo to the portal. And please note that these features, they're only available for OTP based Aadhaar flows, not for biometric iris or face as of now. I would now like to invite Anshul and show us custom branded, branded journeys for Aadhaar Resign screen. Over to you, Anshul. Uh, thank you, Shubesh. Hi, everyone. So as Shubesh said, that customization is very important in especially the customer facing uh, journeys. It helps businesses to build a stronger connection to have a standardized experience, which leads to increased task trust and reduced drop-offs. Let me share my screen. Okay. So 
this is our legality dashboard so as uh, so legality currently offers you the customization options in legality's journey so i'll just briefly touch upon that many of you will already would already be aware of this but here using legality you can define what should be your brand name so i've given my brand name as anshul's brand what are your brand colors you can just input the hex code here and that that customer that color would be shown and we have also shown how the the preview of the signing journeys so how the how your emails are uh, going to look like how the signing journey for the final signer would look like in both mobile and web that so that is visible from here right so through this you can have that seamless journey when they are they are on your uh, websites or uh, applications when they go from there to legality they still have the value the, this is still have the same feeling that okay we are part of the same overall flow so legality offers you all of that through this by these colors adding your logos brand name etc but what happens is with aadhar journeys whenever you are signing of course you will preview the document select the signature type and everything on legality's platform but for signing you'll have to go to you a uidi approved esp page so currently it looks like this so here where it was showing the brand colors clearly and still having the seamless experience when a user lands on a page like this which neither contains the name of your brand or your brand colors it may, may lead to um, confusion mistrust and sometimes also the drop offs so this leg is something that we have currently worked on and i want to show you how the journeys would look like now so i'll quickly show you a journey Let me create one. So I'm creating an Aadhaar-based document journey where I want the user to sign using Aadhaar. So for this, I'll select the signature type as Aadhaar. I should have said that this is currently only available for our OTP flow, so turning them off and sending the document. The document is sent here. and now when i sign the journey let's see how the overall experience would look like for the signer so when i click on this sign button so as you can see the brand colors that legality currently has which is purple so i have chosen that shade so it is visible here in the bottom here on the bot button and the header so that is still available like this and so now uh, earlier i would have landed on a page like this but now this time i land on a page like this which is more in sync with how my earlier journey was how my usual experience with this brand is like so here i also see legality's logo i also see i also have an option to add a bank's logo which will appear here uh, along with that i can add uh, secondary colors in the backdrop the page colors uh, i can change the color for my header the text font type and everything can be changed here along with that i can also define the colors for this button these buttons the secondary button and the primary button i can also specify that so when i do this the journey looks more comprehensive it is more coherent so so that is what can be done now so that the overall experience is more coherent and seamless so yeah that's what i wanted to show you back to you shubhash Great, okay, thanks a lot for that, Anshul. And again, like before moving ahead, I quickly wanted to check: does anyone have any questions about this feature? Like it might have seemed like a small feature; it might have felt like a feature which is inconsequential. But I would like to say that this is a very important feature, while it seems like it might not be, because firstly, it helps you maintain that brand consistency, which will ultimately help you reduce customer drop-offs. because a person is only comfortable in a digital journey when they know who is the digital journey for and if they can't see your logo your brand your colors they will not feel comfortable with it so yeah and that sort of brings us to the last feature for today which is asim could you go to the next yeah thanks a lot which is dynamic url routing and this was a feature that i was saying you can use to Compare with the KFS guidelines that were recently released by RBI, 
in case anyone has any queries about these guidelines you can also watch our showcase which we can provide to you in the thank you email after the showcase there we just break down what the new guidelines are what are the key requirements under these uh, guidelines and what are the just give me a second okay sorry ha there and we break down what are the key requirements and uh, how you can comply with them using legality so uh, for dynamic url routing it's a way for you to send people to a custom web page or a custom url after they've signed the uh, document currently if you'll see once they're done signing the document they get a screen document has been signed or document completed journey completed whatever and there they get two options either they get a button okay which they click the screen closes or it automatically closes on its own if you're using web sdks or mobile sdks within 5 seconds but with this feature you will be able to redirect them to a different url altogether now think of this first you send your signer the kfs once they're done acknowledging or signing the kfs they will get automatically redirected to the loan agreement as soon as they're done signing the kfs with this tool i don't know if making it's making a lot of sense to everyone on this call today but uh, i think it will make a lot of sense once anshul shows us how it works so over to you anshul thank you shubhesh i present my screen and then cha so so for our api integrated clients who are using legality's platform via api integration if you wanted your user to land on a different page after they have completed the journey if you wanted to modify once they've completed the journey how much time should they spend still spend on the final completed page or if they should see a okay button after that or not so for that earlier the solution was through the sdk implementation but now uh, we are now you can just simply change and append few values a uh, few variables at the end of the signing url and you'll be able to modify the experience before i show you how it is done i'll just quickly show you how the journey used to look like earlier so once i'll just quickly sign the document so let's say when i earlier used to uh, earlier a signer used to sign a document then they were ready when they have completed the signing journey this is the screen where they land on they would see a 5 seconds timer an okay button if they want to show and then this button is there and after it is done the user will land on legality's page or legality's dashboard page and uh, this is how the journey would usually flow but now we can customize that and there are three levels of customizations that are currently available we have also updated our api documentation page for that a this dynamic redirect url which is when the signing journey is successfully completed where should the user land on on which page should the user land on that can be defined second is customization countdown time uh, custom countdown timer that means for how long do you want the signer to be there on the completed uh, document for example in the uh, example that i just showed it was just 5 seconds if you want to increase that or if you want the journey to be super quick you can make it 0 seconds or 2 seconds so that can also be controlled now and the last bit is that con uh, control uh, the visibility of okay button there's an okay button if the, if you want a user to aff uh, give an affirmative action by clicking on okay so that they move on the next page that behavior can also be controlled so this is how you can customize your signing post signing experience for your signers so let's see how can i do that so for that if you can see here these are the three parameters that we have introduced and of course all of this is for the api flow so one does not need to append these values uh, manually so that can simply be done via code programmatically so let's take an example so this is uh, a sign invitation that i have now to customize it what i need to do here is i need to set and i need to add this question mark so this is this was a, up, up, up until here this was a signing url after that i simply need to add a question mark which is here and then add redirect url so this is redirect url i'll just simply yes so here i uh, in the redirect url i can add the url of the uh, link where i want the user to land on so i have added google.com for instance here now if i want to specify a timer as well so i can specify i can just add and and enter the timer as 3 similarly if i want the okay button to be shown or not i can do that by writing okay button and i can give value true or false so if you simply append these values 
after your signing journey url you you are good to go so let's see how this would impact the journey now so here nothing changes in the signing journey so i have also signed this again and here when i click on the signed document please note what all the changes so i had entered 3 seconds in the timer so my it, it starts from 2 there is no okay button and when the journey ends rather than going to legality page i'm i'm going through going to google's page so through this you can make the user land on any page you want if there is a custom page that that is there for this sign up for example they have completed a loan document journey and then you want them to show the next steps for that sanction the loan filing journey is done and now you want them to land show them the next steps you can simply just add that url they'll be land they'll be landing there uh, a more profound example would be of the KFS document that needs to be signed before the loan document. So for that, what you can do is you can create two document signing journeys on legality. One can be of KFS, another can be of the loan signing document journey itself. And once the signer completes the KFS journey, you can use the signing link of the loan document journey in KFSs so that when user completes the KFS journey, they automatically land on the loan document signing journey. So through this, possibilities are numerous the way that this can be used so uh, not you don't have to go through the sdk implementation now you can simply use the simple method and use your api integrated flows to a better customization yeah uh, shivesh do you want me to cover something else apart from this oh uh, no this was great if anyone has any questions about this feature or any other feature that we've shown today feel free to raise your hand or send it to us in the q a box or in the chat box we do this showcase freshly baked at legality once a month and uh, apart from that we also keep sending a lot of real time product updates case studies and regulatory or industry updates so for all of that you can just sign up for our whatsapp updates by scanning the link qr code that's visible on your screen <coughs> and you you'll be the first ones to know whatever is happening at legality for example like recently we sent out a checklist uh, to all of our clients who signed up for updates and if they just followed that checklist they would have complied with the new kfs guidelines that were laid down by rbi so we keep sending uh, such stuff to get it you will opt in for this by scanning the code uh, we'll wait for a few minutes see if anyone has any questions and probably then we can close okay Anshul, we have a question which is on custom branding for Aadhaar resign screen, are we expecting uh, custom branding to be available for non OTP flows as well? At the moment, but we did observe that it it was working for a few cases, so we are exploring it. But we'll have to do a POC in order to confirm it. But going back, okay. And uh, follow up to it, which is like uh, the CDSL offer anything else apart from just the logo. In our discussion with CDSL, so it is just a logo, logo that is uh, customized, nothing apart from this, but we are in discussion with them. Something else can be done apart from this also. Awesome. So in case there are no further questions, uh, we wait for a minute. Uh, Anshul, is, is there anything else that's in the pipeline that people would love to see, like a tease or something? Yeah, we are uh, building a lot of new things. So we have a new uh, new uh, addition to our EBG suite that is going to come soon. And uh, then we have a new e-sign type also that is going to come. So a bunch of new things in our plan, in our pipeline. So excited for that. Just Poking on that EBJ bit, that's part of our larger bank guarantee offering, right? Like wherein you can execute the entire bank guarantee electronically via legality. Right. We since uh, NSL has added EBG to their to their offerings, so we are we are committed to cover, complete the flow end to end. So how, what all touch points are there? What all manual uh, efforts can be reduced? So we are focusing on that, and this is new update will exactly talk about that. Okay, great. 
I guess there are no more questions. So we can close. Thanks a lot, everyone, for giving us your time today. And I hope you found this session useful. We'll see you in the next session.